the higher you come, the better players you're going to play with. And they have the skill and the vision to put these balls in and provide me a service. Determined. Strong-minded. Knows what he wants. And that is to score goals. He wanted to score, he needed to score. He was one of the finest Premier League strikers there was. I needed the people around me who could read the movement and put the balls where I could get into space, get into scoring positions. You have some strikers the also they can they can give assists and they have, they have they they get a good feeling with that one also but I think for Ruth was was mainly uh, about scoring. He was a bit of a poacher, a goal hanger. Those types of strikers really annoyed me. But if he was away, you wouldn't catch him. There was a sort of selfishness about him, and I kind of relished playing against that type of individual. Every training game or competition game, doesn't matter. He wants to score everywhere. With Ruud van Nistelrooy, all he talked about was scoring goals, breaking records, being the best striker in the world. He was a great guy, but he had a very intelligent way of playing. He was very clever, as well as being a wonderful player. I remember my childhood playing football in the backyard, in school, and then at the local football club in the village until I was 13. I thought I did pretty well, actually, but I never got pick, picked up somewhere. I, I never had an invitation. So I said to my parents, this is not going right because I want to become a professional football player. I need to move to another amateur team, which is in a bigger town around where I lived. And, and so I did. I just played there for one year and I got scouted by FC Den Bosch, who were in the, in the championship at the time in Holland. After four years with Den Bosch, Van Nistelrooy was snapped up by top flight side Herenveen, where he was convinced to abandon his midfield role and play up front. The switch of positions paid off. He scored on his debut. It was a huge emotion because it was a lot of things that I practiced as a new number nine. Hold up play playing in the, the supporter player, another movement, he passed me in, and I was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and made the right decision by striking it low and hard, diagonal. There were three things that I was working on a lot over the last weeks before that game, so all that stuff came together and it was, it was special. The striker scored an impressive 13 times in his debut at a Divisie season which caught the eye of PSV Eindhoven. The Dutch heavyweights paid a record transfer fee of 6.3 million euros for their new target man. I was delighted. I was so happy to, to be able to make a move already yeah, to, to the top team in, uh, in Holland. My earlier recollections are with, uh, with, uh, with PSV, with, uh, with him, and uh, he, uh, he did some damage uh, for, uh, against us. Almost just, just like a rock at the top of my head. I had massive confidence. PSV bought me for that amount of money. Of course, the expectations were high, but I was so confident at the time that I was, you know, I felt ready and, and, and ready for, for the challenge. Brazilian star Ronaldo's departure from PSV to Barcelona two years earlier had broken up the league's most prolific attack. 
But now, another fearsome partnership was born. An immediate connection with Luke Nilis. Our partnership was, was unbelievable. I know how he likes to have the ball and the way he burns everything. And so my game was not only focused on myself, but... When you're so complimentary that your both best skills are very different, but making each other stronger is special. In the 98-99 season, Van Nistelrooy's form led PSV to the Eredivisie title with an incredible haul of 31 goals in just 34 games, a feat which earned him the Dutch Golden Boot and Player of the Year awards. I remember two derbies against Ajax. We won it easily, so that's where you start thinking as a team, like, OK, we're playing this top team and top rivals, and we're being fairly easy and very dominant. With Ajax, we had a bit of great period. That stopped when, uh, when PSV won the league. Then a certain point, players leave and uh, you, need a, you need to develop a new team. And then I think PSV stepped in that, uh, stepped in, in that year. Uh, had fantastic players. Every game we were unbeatable. It was one of the most dominant seasons I, I remember as a player. Once again, Van Nistelrooy's domestic form won significant admirers. This time it was Sir Alex Ferguson and Manchester United. It's quite an interesting day, actually. No, I was, I was, I was on my way here to the stadium because I, I, I went through the day of, of medical tests. I was in the car on my way to Old Trafford, where the press conference would be. And then there was a phone call uh, to my manager. They saw some damage, not only in the medial ligament, but also in the cruciate ligament. Obviously, that was uh, impossible to go through the medical, and it, all, it got all cancelled. Van Nistelrooy flew back home and made plans to recover. Until this. <laughs> the scream was like total devastation. At the moment, you realise that everything's gone what you worked for your whole life. And obviously the big worry was as well, how, how are you gonna go, come back from this? Van Nistelrooy had ruptured his knee ligaments. But one year later, he finally passed his medical and in the summer of 2001, completed a British record 19 million pound transfer to United. It was a, a dream come true. Moving abroad, surrounded by world-class players and a world-class manager. It can't get any better. It, it was fantastic. Alex Ferguson was there for 26, 27 years. And of course, at a certain point, yeah, you can mold the club uh, uh, completely to your, uh, to your own satisfaction. He has a good presence on the football field, which is, I think is important in a team of ours. His pace is good. His understanding of the game is good. And he scores. And you have a, a strong power and you have a, you have a strong dressing room. In that way, I think Ferguson has been influential also, making sure uh, Root was uh, felt wanted, uh, not, not only the first time, but also uh, keeping in touch with, uh, with him uh, during the, his cruciate ligament and, uh, and, certain, and signing him. When a big club as United wants to pay such an amount of money for a player, that means that they have big confidence in it. So that, that really gives me also very big confidence. I mean, have a midfield behind you with Giggs on the left and Beckham on the right, and Scholes, Keane and Varane. Couldn't get any better. Torales, you know, he liked the, the passing game, the attacking mentality. Score the first goal, then you want to score the second, you want to score the third, just never stop attacking. He was always going to score goals because he had three of the best, probably, passers, crossers and dribblers of the ball in the Premier League at that, mo that, that moment in time. On the different skill they had, for me it was a great way to express my creativity as a striker, my runs, and I enjoyed it a lot. The Dutchman took no time at all acclimatising to another country. His career at Old Trafford was an immediate success, despite not lifting any silverware in that first season. However, the following year, Van Nistelrooy was in magnificent form, scoring 44 goals, including... Looking back on my time as a football player, that was the best moment, that was the best of me. 
receiving the ball on the halfway line, back to goal, turn in a dribble, and in between two midfield players. Another change of pace, quick cut back and a push that left the goalie standing. It couldn't get any better than that. Rude doesn't normally create goals out of himself. He normally is waiting for somebody else to provide. But it was the angle in which he scored. I think if I'd have tried that, I think I'd have ripped every knee ligament in my knee. When you think of Rude's greatest goals for Manchester United, that was the best. The Dutchman's 25 Premier League goals helped ensure Manchester United ended the 2002-03 season as champions for the eighth time in 11 years. We had a great celebration. It was the last game of the season against Everton. That was special. That was really special. When we lifted the trophy at Goodison Park on the last day of the season, I think for Rude that was a big moment in his career because when you win something as a Manchester United footballer, it gives you that taste, that taste for success, that taste to do it again. And uh, he got that. He got the leading boot scorer, but he wanted to win as a team, and I think that was a big moment for Rude. During his time at Old Trafford, the fierce rivalry between Manchester United and Arsenal had threatened to boil over on numerous occasions. On the 21st of September 2003, in what has since been called the Battle of Old Trafford, that tension reached its crescendo. A victory at Old Trafford or a result meant you had a chance of winning the Premier League. Simply, if you lost, it was potentially all over. And whenever those two sort of figureheads came together, then you knew that you were in for some fireworks. The rivalry between the two clubs felt like we were going into battle. Two of the best teams, both wanting the same thing, is to win the Premier League title. We were coasting in the match, and Pachi Vieira got sent off. We felt that Van Nistelrooy had induced that, really, an overreaction to a challenge. And then it was like the Animo. They were coming at us from all directions. They sensed that we were down to 10 men, obviously. And then I subsequently gave away a penalty. And then the rest kind of is history. From that moment, I, I changed something in my approach to watch penalties. I wasn't sort of mentally ready, you know, to take it. It was a last minute, it was a big penalty kick. What did you say to Van Nistelrooy? Um, of course, I would keep that secret. But it was just a, I don't really regret that because I've always reacted as I feel fit. Rude and Martin Keown, they had some unbelievable battles. But I think Rude enjoyed it. I think he inspired him. I was so gutted because of the miss that I didn't really notice all the hassle that was going on. I took it really personally not to be able to win the game for the team and, and uh, for, for the fans, for everyone. When things escalate like that, you know, it doesn't belong on a football pitch and, you know, that, that I think everybody knows that as well. Manchester United did exact some revenge by beating Arsenal in that season's FA Cup semi-final before facing lower league opposition at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. In the final against Millwall, everybody expected us to win. And for me as a child, I used to watch the BBC always in, back, back in the Netherlands, you know, with the, with the FA Cup final. Walking managers, you know, in front of the team, they walk out on the pitch with the, with the flower on their suit. It was like, wow, this FA Cup. It was a big moment for Rude. It was a major, major final, FA Cup final. Forget which country you're in, it's famous throughout the world. Cristiano scored a very important first goal because Millwall was really defending hard. But when he scored, we broke them down, so to say, and I was able to score the second and the third. Rude scored two goals. Rude hadn't won that many trophies with Manchester United at the time, and it was another moment when he tasted success. For me as a child, it was the, 
it was the biggest thing. Not even the Champions League or any other thing, but the FA Cup, that was the big one. A mixture of injury and failure in qualification meant Van Nistelrooy had to wait until the 2004 Euro. However, the appointment of Marco van Basten as head coach saw him fall out of favour with his childhood hero during the 2006 World Cup in Germany. He played no part in their eventual defeat, once again at the hands of Portugal. It was just a different thought on, on the way I should be used. That was it. It, it wasn't more difficult than that. At that time, I was captain. Of course, I spoke with Ruud and I spoke about, with Marco about the situation. Because I think I need to support also, as a captain, my, uh, my, uh, my, my manager. But at that time, I thought uh, that was a, was a wrong decision. I think the decision in this way is not going to work for me. So better do something else. And it's a hard thing to say, really. But I think it, in the end, it's, it's, in, it's in the interest of of the team, of myself, of everybody. Van Basten recalled Van Nistelrooy for the 2008 Euros, but his goal against Russia was not enough to see the Dutch progress to the semi-final. But by the time he'd hung up his boots, the striker had netted an impressive 35 goals in 70 games in a prolific international career. It's great to be part of a national team setup from 98 to 2012. But, you know, football is a game that, um, you know, it doesn't always happen like that. After four exceptional seasons leading the Manchester United attack, Van Nistelrooy was exposed to the ruthlessness of Sir Alex Ferguson and his need to keep rebuilding a winning side. It culminated in a showdown when he was left on the bench for the 2006 League Cup final against Wigan. Carling Cup final, uh, which made it a bit of a roller coaster season for me personally. I was annoyed not getting on the pitch in the final, and I got a bit upset with that. <laughs> that was out of character, you know, to express that during the final. It's obviously out of order, especially against Sir Alex. Shouldn't have happened, but uh, it's uh, something I'm, I'm not the proudest of. He always said Manchester United is the most important. I would make decisions which are best for the club. Looking back on that, he made that decision at the time. I think also he made that decision because a young Cristiano Ronaldo and young Wayne Rooney were coming through in those attacking positions. We won, so I was uh, so like happy. Certainly, uh, I saw Root, and yeah, he was, his face was like thunder. I sort of like explained a little bit what, what happened and I tried to help him a little bit and talk to him. He was a, he's a great friend, great player, and I would have loved uh, to play another couple of years with him at, at United, but uh, it, was not, uh, it was not so given. The summer of 2006 saw the Dutchman move to Real Madrid. For Van Nistelrooy, it was a fresh start. But on arrival, he quickly realised that his goal-scoring exploits at United would count for little at the Bernabeu. Fans were like, OK, you've done, you've done well at United, but now you're at Madrid. It's the best team, the best club, the best city in the world. And they want to see if you're capable of playing in a Bernabeu who puts you under pressure if things are not going well. And, and it happened. I just kept going, kept fighting and turned it around. And from there on, the acceptance is there. Then I couldn't stop scoring. That season, the race for La Liga title could not have been closer. Barcelona had opened up a big gap on us, but little by little, we reduced it. And then we faced a really tough game against Zaragoza. And then you had Barcelona, who were playing against Espanyol. They had a decent team, but in normal circumstances, you'd expect Barcelona to win, but it was a derby, and they drew 2-2. Van Nistelrooy's last-minute equaliser against Zaragoza meant that the race for the title would go right to the wire, where a win against Mallorca on the final day saw Real crown the 2007 La Liga champions. 
It wasn't just a case of him scoring that goal in practically the last minute. He'd scored a lot of goals, and very important ones. Rude was key in that league campaign, not just because of that goal, because of all the ones he scored. Van Nistelrooy finished his first season at the Bernabeu as La Liga's top goal scorer, with an impressive 33 goals in all competitions. He scored a huge number of goals, but it was the way he played too. We needed a player like that. There were some very good players there, but we perhaps never had a complete goal scorer like him. It was really important to link up with players, and I was lucky enough to build that with many of my teammates. Real continued that momentum throughout the next season, and they lifted the trophy again, this time under their new manager, Bernd Schuster. He made us play uh, really, um, really good football, but the team was, was made, and that's what I think that, that won us the second title in a row. The best game was a 4-1 against Barcelona. We already won the league, though we won it very early because we were way ahead and then the 4-1 at, at the Bernabeu against Barcelona. It was an amazing memory. However, by the summer of 2008, the rigours of pre-season began to take their toll. Injuries started to impact Van Nistelrooy's playing time, and it was Madrid's new manager, Manuel Pellegrini, who questioned his future at the club. Madrid signed Kaká, Benzema and Ronaldo, and he said, You've been out for, for, for a long time, you're 32. It's going to be difficult, you know, to make minutes. So, uh, you know, fair enough and, and understandable. With a place at the 2010 World Cup still a possibility, Van Nistelrooy decided that a move to Hamburg would give him the best opportunity of selection for the Netherlands. But it wasn't to be. And after a short stint at Malaga, which saw him help them to a fourth spot and a historic Champions League place, Van Nistelrooy hung up his boots after a stellar domestic and international career. I knew in, in January, more or less, du during the winter break, I felt in training and also in games, I wasn't able to perform the way I, I wanted. The young lads who were coming through simply pass you by. That it's time to realize it's time to stop. Ruud van Nistelrooy was a pure, instinctive goal scorer, and his career statistics bear witness. At club level, he scored 300 and... You can see it on his body language that he, he wants to win every game. But the Ruud was always staying the same guy who I met here in the first day, and that's for me the most important. From the minute he came in, he was the best centre forward I think I played with, in terms of he knew where the goal was. Every time the ball came in the box, he was always there. He had a big game mentality. Internationally in England and uh, in Spain, he's well, well, well regarded, highly regarded, and he's one of the two greats of football. When he arrived at Real Madrid, apart from me thinking what a fantastic signing we had made, later on, I got to know an amazing person. The good thing is that people remember me as, uh, as somebody who's done everything to perform for the club that I played for. I'm proud of that, that people are grateful of what I've done for the club and they have great memories about it. That, that's what I did it for. <laughs> 